everyone. This video is going to be for Chapter 6 review. Feel free to pause anywhere, rewind, or skip um, to any problems that you need to see or have a little review, double review from earlier. So let's begin number one. What is the graph of this system of equations? The y must be by itself in both equations, so you're going to add to the other side. That means we have the equation 3x plus 2. And the top one is also 3x plus 2. That means we have the exact same line, because it has the same slope and same y-intercept. So we're going to actually get infinitely many solutions, because when we have the same line intersecting with itself, it intersects at every single point. And I really hope that you guys remember how to graph a line. You always start with the b, which is 2. The slope is 3 over 1. You go up 3 over 1 and connect. Make sure you know the difference between the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's go to number 2 now. The y's are by themselves. The first equation has slope negative 3 and b positive 5. And the next one has slope negative 3 and b positive 4. You can see that they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So that means we have parallel lines, and we know that parallel lines never intersect, so that means we have no solution. And we want to plot these two lines by using the y-intercepts. So let's go at positive 5 and positive 4, and you can go down 3 over 1 to each. Oh, I'm a little bit off. This one right here. This one and this one. So as you can see, they do not intersect. They are parallel the whole way. No solution when you get parallel lines. Infinitely many solutions when you get the same line. Substitution. Y needs to be by itself. Take the 2x, plug it in for the y. So that is now looking like 2x equals 4x plus 2. Subtract the 4x to the other side, opposite operations. We get a negative 2x equals positive 2. Divide both sides by negative 2, and we get x equals negative 1. Now take that negative 1, plug it in for either equation. The one that I am trying to emphasize to you is that the easiest one is the circled one. So take the negative 1, plug it in for the x. 2 times negative 1 equals negative 2. There's our y. And last step, put it in coordinate form, which would be negative 1, comma, negative 2. Remember, when in doubt, plug in the point and see if it works. Now the next one, the y is not by itself. You can choose either equation to get the y by itself. I'll just choose the first one because it's the first one. So let's subtract the 2x to the other side. Do not combine those right terms. That's illegal. Bring the negative 2x first. And now divide by negative 1 to get rid of all the negatives. y equals positive 2x plus 6. Take that 2x plus 6, plug it in for the y in the second equation because that's the one we have not worked with yet. So now we have 4x minus parentheses 2x plus 6. The parentheses are necessary because you're, what you're going to do next is share the negative. And that's what we're doing now. So share the negative 1 technically. So we have 4x minus 2x minus 6 equals negative 1. 2x minus 6 equals negative 1. Plus 6 on each side. 2x equals 5. Divide by 2 and you get x equals 2.5. Take that and plug it in for the y in the circled equation. So we, now we're going to take this and go right here. And we have y equals 2 times 2.5 plus 6. 2.5 times 2 is 5. And 5 plus, oh great, <laughs> 5 plus 6 equals 11. So that's our y. Coordinate point is 2.5 comma 11. Okay, application problem. Jacob and Brant are going shopping. They are buying t-shirts and pants. Those are going to be your variables. X equals cost of one t-shirt. And Y equals cost of one pair of pants. 
And since there are two guys shopping, we're going to make one equation for each guy. Jacob's buying eight t-shirts, so instead of writing eight t-shirts, we're going to write 8x. He's also buying five pairs of pants, so that would be 5y. You always attach the amount of items with the cost by multiplication, and his total is $220. Brant is buying five t-shirts and one pair of pants for 112 Now, you could use either substitution or elimination. Um, I would recommend elimination. It's the faster way. So take a look at the coefficients of the y variable. You see a 5 and a 1. In order to get rid of them, the 1 in the bottom must be a 5. So we shall multiply by 5. The first equation is going to stay the same, so we rewrite that. And we now get 25x plus 5y equals 560. Now, in order to get rid of the 5y's, we must subtract. If you add, you're not going to get rid of them. You're going to get 10 instead of 0. So, subtract, use parentheses. You must share the subtraction symbol with everything inside. So, we get 8x minus 25x, that is negative 17x. 5y minus itself cancels out. There should always be a canceling moment. And 220 minus 560 is negative 340. One step equation, we're going to divide both sides by negative 17 and we get x equals 20. So that means a t-shirt, a really nice t-shirt, is worth $20 at this store. Now to find the price of a pair of pants. Which equation looks better? In my opinion, the bottom one has smaller numbers, so we might as well use that one. So this 20 is going to go right there. So we have 5 times 20 plus y equals 112. 5 times 20 is 100. Subtract 100 from both sides, and you get 12. So a pair of pants is on sale for $12, and the shirt was $20. Here comes the perimeter problem. There was one just like this in your math Excel assignment the other day. First of all, we must know the formula for perimeter of a rectangle. You learned this back in elementary slash middle school, and I think everybody knows how to find the perimeter. The formula is P equals 2L plus 2W. But instead of writing the P, we're going to write the 60 because they told us that's what it equals. So 60 equals 2L plus 2W. That's our first equation. Now, the next equation is going to be dealing with the next sentence. Length is five more than the five more than the four times the width. Okay. Length is means L equals. Five more than means five plus and four times the width is four W. So as you can see, the L's by itself, which is awesome. The more ideal method is substitution because the L is by itself. So circle that and put it right there. So our new equation is going to be sixty equals 2 times 5 plus 4w plus 2w. 60 equals, distribute the 2, 10 plus 8w plus 2w, and combine like terms, 8w plus 2w is 10w, please don't do opposites, they're right next to each other. Um, two steps, minus 10, minus 10, 50 equals 10w. Divide both sides by 10 and w equals 5. So the hard part's done. Now to find the L, take that 5 and plug it in for the circled equation. So that is the L equals 5 plus 4w. So let's do that. L equals 5 plus 4 times 5 because we just found out the w is 5. 5 plus 20 is 25. So that is the L. And of course we want to use our units so attach some centimeters after that, and there's our answer. Okay, first page done. Let's keep going. Elimination. Ideally, the numbers in front, called the coefficients, are the same, one pair of them. And really nice in this problem, the fives are the same. They have opposite signs in front, so that means we're going to have to add in order to get rid of them. So we get 7x, and then the 5y's cancel, and we get negative 28 on the other side. Remember, when you add two negatives, you get more negative. Divide both sides by 7, and you get x equals negative 4. 
take that negative 4 and plug it in for either equation. The first one has smaller numbers, so let's use that one. This is a negative 8, everything else the same, plus 8, plus 8, 5y equals 5, divide both sides by 5, and you get positive 1. And coordinate point is going to be negative 4, comma 1. Okay, let's try the next one. Unfortunately, the coefficients are not the same, so it's your choice if you want to get rid of the x or the y. I think that getting rid of the x first is a little bit easier just because of the negatives involved. So in order to get rid of the x's, the coefficient of the bottom x must be 3. Currently, it's a 1, so the way we fix that is multiply by 3. First equation stays the same. Second equation becomes 3x plus 3y equals negative 3. Now, in order to eliminate the three x's, we must subtract. Otherwise, if we add, we get a 6, and that's not 0. These go away. We get negative 4y minus 3y. That's negative 7y, not negative 1. And lastly, negative 24 minus a negative 3. Double negative means we're adding, so technically it's negative 24 plus 3, and that equals negative 21. Divide both sides by negative 7 y equals 3. Now take the y equals 3, plug it in for the bottom equation because it's much nicer. x plus 3 equals negative 1 minus 3 minus 3. x equals negative 4. Coordinate point is negative 4 comma 3. How many solutions does this system have? First of all, never choose two solutions. Doesn't make sense. Now, we're going to see that the variables will cancel out. So when the variables cancel out, one solution is also not a possibility. And when the variables cancel out, you get a true statement, then it's infinitely many. And if you get a false statement, then it's no solution. So that's how it works always. The first equation in number 9 has the y by itself, which is awesome. So we're going to take that negative 2x plus 5 and plug it in for the y in the other equation. So now we have 2 times negative 2x plus 5 plus 4x equals negative 10. Share the 2. Negative 4x plus 10 plus 4x equals negative 10. And now the 4x's cancel. We get 10 equals negative 10. True or false? That is a false statement because of the negative. So that means we have no solution. Number 10. Elimination is ideal. As you can see, the x and y's are lined up. And let's make, let's multiply the top equation by 5 in order to get the x's the same. Five x minus ten y equals twenty on top and bottom. Hopefully, you can realize that that's the exact same line. Um, or if you can't realize that, then you can obviously just subtract and get zero equals zero, which is a true statement. And that means our answer is infinitely many solutions. Allison has some $1 bills and some $5 bills. She has 14 bills total. The value of the bills is $30. Write a system of equations, use elimination to solve it, and figure out how many of each type of bill she has. Let's define our variables first. X is going to be the number of $5 bills, and Y is going to be the number of $1 bills. So now let's make our equations. The first one we're going to deal with is the value of the bill. Obviously, a $5 bill is worth $5. 
and we're going to attach the X. And then a $1 bill is worth one. And we're going to attach the Y. And lastly, she has $30 total. So our first equation is all about the value of money. The next equation is going to be very familiar to you, X plus Y. We're talking about the amount of bills currently. X plus Y equals 14, because that's the number of bills she has total. And hopefully you can see that elimination is the better route. So in order to get rid of the Y's, they both have 1's in front, subtract the second equation. 5X minus 1X is 4X, 1Y cancels out with itself, and we get 16 on the other side. Divide by 4, and X equals 4. So Allison has 4 $5 bills. The hard part's done, the easy part's coming. Take the 4 and plug it in for the X. So we have 4 plus Y equals 14. Subtract 4 from both sides and you get Y equals 10. Airplane problem coming up. A plane leaves Chicago and flies 750 miles to New York. If it takes two and a half hours to get to New York, flying against the wind, but only two hours to fly back to Chicago, what is the plane's rate of speed and what is the wind speed? So let's define our variables A and W. A is going to be the airplane speed and W is going to be the wind speed. Let's do the first equation going from New York to Chicago. The wind is going with the plane, so we're going to do A plus W. They combine because the plane's going faster when the wind is helping. And then the other side is going to be the speed. Speed is always measured in miles per hour. So the miles is going to be 750, no matter what. The bottom is what's going to change. When they're going faster, it takes less time to get there. So it's two hours in the beginning when their wind is going with the plane. Now the wind is going against the plane. So that means we're going to subtract the wind because it's, you know, fighting against the plane basically. And on the other side it's going to be 750 divided by 2.5. Now we definitely want to know what those numbers are. So two, 750 divided by 2 is 375. And the next number is 300. You can choose to eliminate either variable. I think I would choose to get rid of the W's first. I think that's just easier. 1A plus 1A is 2A. W plus a negative W goes away, and we get 675 on the other side. Divide by 2, and you get A equals 37.5. 337.5 miles per hour. That is the speed of the airplane. Now to find the wind speed, you're just going to plug it in for either equation. I think I prefer the top. So 337.5 plus W equals 375. Subtract this number from both sides and you get W equals 37.5 miles per hour. Hugo, Jennifer, and Annie invest 18000 in equipment to print yearbooks for schools. Each yearbook costs $6 to print and sells for $24. How many yearbooks must they sell before their business breaks even? Remember, when you're at a break-even point, that means you're not losing money, but you're not gaining money. So at that very point, the expenses equals the income. Now, we must know what our variable is. X is going to be the number of yearbooks. Expenses means that we're that these people are actually paying money um, to find their business, to start it, and all that. So first of all, they they're investing eighteen thousand dollars in equipment, which is a hefty um, investment, and they're also paying six dollars per yearbook to make. So that's all the stuff that they're spending. Now on the other side, income is what they're making, so that could be twenty four x. Now it's a nice basic equation, you just have to combine like terms by subtracting 18,000 
equals 18x, divide both sides by 18, and we find out that x equals 1,000 yearbooks. So that is the number of yearbooks that they must sell in order to break even, but if they actually wanted to make some money, they would have to sell more than 1,000. Which ordered pair is a solution of the inequality? Couple ways you could do that. Method one or option one for you is to graph that if you feel comfortable and then plot the points and see which one is in the shaded area. Another method is to just plug the points in immediately. So I think that you would prefer that way. So we're going to plug in the X and the Y. Um, so we're going to have four is greater than or equal to question mark. Four times three minus five. That means we have 12 minus 5, and that's 7. Is 4 greater than or equal to 7? No, it's not. Cross it out. Next one. 1's going in for the y, and 2 is going in for the x. 4 times 2 minus 5. 8 minus 5, 1. 1 is greater than or equal to 3. That's not true. Cross out b. Let's try c. 0 going in for the y, 3 going in for the x, 0 is greater than or equal to 12 minus 5, that is 7, 0 is not greater than or equal to 7, cross that out. Obviously it's D, but just to make sure, uh, let's plug in the 1's. I know it's a little bit more work, but you can handle it. 1 is greater than or equal to 4 minus 5, 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1, yes, that is true. 1, 1 is a solution. All right, Hoy Vux coming up. Like I said, this is your best friend. You should know this by now. We have used this many times, and I know you learned it last year, too. You don't really need to worry about the middle stuff, and I'm just putting it there so you know what it is. What's really important is that horizontal lines start with y. They go through the y-axis. Um, and then, obviously, vertical go through the x-axis. So taking a look at number 15, we have x is greater than or equal to 3. Starts with an x, so that means we have a vertical line going through the 3. Now, it is solid because of that line underneath the symbol. And it is going to be shaded right because the greater than symbol. So now let's put all that to use at the three vertical line and shaded right. Next one. Y is less than negative one. It is a horizontal line. It is also dashed because of that less than sign. And lastly, it's shaded below. Negative one dashed. Shaded below. Okay, number 17. Slope intercept form tells me that this is going to be a diagonal line. You definitely want to organize your givens. So immediately we know that the, the slope is 6, negative 6, and the b is 4. We also know that it's going to be a dashed line because there's no line under the symbol. And it's also going to be shaded above. So now use the b. You always start with the b. I'm going to write that just so it gets clear. Start with the B. Four. And also, please remember that the Y axis is the one going up and down. I saw a lot of mistakes on that, unfortunately. So now start at the four and go down six over one. Make a dashed line. And shade above. And if you ever forget how, like, exactly where to shade, if you're totally confused on where to shade, use a test point. And the easiest test point is zero, zero. So if you plug zero, zero in for the inequality and it works, then you'll shade on the side where the, the origin or zero, zero is. 
Whereas if you plug zero, zero in and it doesn't work, then obviously you're not shading on that side. Okay, now 18 and 19 are very similar, except you're coming at it from the other side. You're, you're given the graph and you have to write the inequality. So let's just write down some stuff that we know. This is a vertical line, so that means it's going to be starting with x. It is a solid line, so that means we're going to have a line underneath. And lastly, it's shaded left, which means smaller numbers. That symbol is less than or equal to, and the number it's going through is negative 3. Next one, the M and the B. Write those down. The B is negative 4, and the M is going to be up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. That's positive 5. Now, it is a dashed line, and it is shaded above. Let's put all that together. The inequality always starts with Y. Dashed shaded above is going to be greater than and 5x goes in the m, x spot, and minus 4 goes in the b spot. So the answer to this one is y is greater than 5x minus 4. Okay, here comes kind of a challenge problem. We learned this in section 6.6. .6. Let's label them line 1 and line 2. Um, and let's just go for it. So let's talk about line one first. It is solid and it is shaded above. Okay. The picture doesn't show you the actual shading, like the whole thing. It only shows you the overlap. Now let's talk about the M and the B. The B is off the screen, but it is negative eight. And the M, just start like down here, go down three, one, two, three, over one, that's a negative three slope. So our inequality is going to be Y is greater than or equal to negative three X minus eight. That's our first inequality. Line two coming up, it is also solid, but it is shaded below this time. I'm going to use a different color. If I can use the pen. There we go. Okay. So it's shaded below as you can see. The M and the B. The B is positive 8 and the M is 1. So our inequality is going to be Y is less than or equal to 1X plus 8. And we are done with that one. Okay, we're on the last page. This is awesome. Is the ordered pair a solution of this inequality? Show why or why not? Not. So first thing is plug in the 3, 3. Label it. And 3 is going in for both variables, which is nice. 3 greater than or equal to 18 over 13 plus 9. Hopefully you know that the way that you combine like terms when you have fractions is make the denominators all the same. So we're going to have 39 over 13 greater than equal to greater than 18 over 13 and 117 over 13. Now of course you can just type this into your calculator, but I want you to show you. I want to show you the other way, um, the behind the scenes, what's what what the calculator is actually doing. So now we have 39 over 13 is greater than 135 over 13. This is obviously not true. So this point is not a solution. And then if it did work for the inequality, then it would be a solution. What is the graph of this system? Okay, let's talk about the M and the B. M equals negative 5, B equals 3. This is a dashed line and it's shaded below. Start at the 3, 
and go down five, one, two, three, four, five, over one. It is going to be a dashed shaded below. Line two coming up. M is two. B is negative four, dashed and shaded above. Start at the negative four and go up to over, over one, up to over one, etc. Make it dashed and shade above. So as you can see, the solution area or region is where the red and green are crossing or overlapping. Any point in that overlapping region is a solution for the system of linear inequalities. Almost done. Figure out what is the mistake that was made by the student. 3, 1 is the coordinate point, and what happened was that they put the 3 in for the y. As you can see at this point right here, they plugged it in for the y instead of the x. That's the main mistake. So let's talk about that. And now we just need to fix it, which won't take too long. 1 goes in for the y, and 3 goes in for the x. 1 is greater than or equal to 9 minus 5. That is 1 is greater than or equal to 4. And that is obviously not true. It is a false statement, so that means 3, 1 is not a solution of this inequality. Okay, we made it. The last one. Gina is working two jobs to save at least $500 for her trip. She earns $8 per hour at the first job and $10 per hour at the second job. What is an inequality that can help Gina know how many hours she needs to work at each job to save enough money for her trip? Graph the inequality. And basically in this whole area right here, I'm helping you graph the inequality. This is, these are like the prelim, preliminary steps. So X is going to be the number of hours at first job. Y is going to be the number of hours at second job. And basically what you do is you attach the amount per hour with the variable. So that means we have 8X plus 10Y. She wants to save at least 500. That means 500 is the smallest amount. So we want the greater than or equal to symbol. At this point, you have the choice. You can put it in slope intercept form, or you can find the x and the y intercepts. I think that the easier approach is finding the x and y intercepts. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, when did I learn this? Well, specifically, you learned this in section 5.5, last chapter. Section was called standard form, and you learned exactly how to find the x and y intercepts. I'm being super clear because there were some kids that were confused about if we learned this or not, and we most certainly did. Check it out in your book. Or your notes if you kept them. So now, to find the x-intercept, plug 0 in for y. So that means we have 8x plus 10 times 0 is greater than or equal to 500. This cancels out because it's just 0. 8x is greater than or equal to 500, and we don't need that symbol in the middle. Divide by 8, and we get x is equal to 62.5. So that is our x-intercept. Similarly, now we're going to find our y-intercept, and we're going to plug 0 in for x. You always plug the 0 in for the other variable because you want to get rid of it. So now we have 8 times 0 plus 10y, and then we'll just keep the symbol, I guess. This goes away. 10y is greater than or equal to 500 
divide both sides by 10 and you get y equals 50. So that is our y-intercept. Last couple steps, dashed or solid. It is a solid line because of that symbol right there. Remember, solid means we're including any point on that line. And lastly, we're shading above because it's a greater than symbol. Okay, let's get to it and graph this. I suggest going up by tens or some number close to it. Label the axes, number of hours at first job, number of hours at second job, and plot these points. The x and y intercepts. The x intercept is 62.5, so we're going to put it right there. And the y intercept is 50. And yes, we're going to connect the dots with a solid line and shade above. So what this is saying is any point in the shaded region, Gina can work any combination of these hours in order to make at least $500. Okay, I hope this help, helped you a lot, and I encourage you to study, which means practice these problems, cover up your answers, try them from scratch, go through your notes, have somebody quiz you, and all that. I really encourage you to study because I want you to do well. And I hope that's clear. Have a great weekend, guys, and I'll see you soon.